Hello everybody, Wadshoot here, and welcome back to Cemetery Mary. Alright, so, it's been a while, sorry about that. Like always, uh, real life happened, got very busy. And this game is actually making me kind of sad because I just finished... Well, not, not finished, I was kind of reading pieces by pieces. And my favorite one is called, uh, You Make Kui Mary? And it's a manga, and it just finished. Now I'm all sad, so... Hopefully I don't say sad while I'm playing this game. Let me let me guys know if you've ever heard of that anime or played it or, what, or read it or whatever. And of course, Crovin was once again nowhere to be seen. However, when I checked my phone that morning, I realized he had sent me a, a little message. To my surprise, there were other messages there as well from my new friends. Who should I read first? Oh my god. Ew. Oh, look at that cutie. Twyla, Crovin... Good morning, Miss Mary. Oh, I gotta read Twyla's first. I don't think that we're gonna be able to have a romantic end with that girl, but who knows. Do I have to- wait, I have to actually click it? The fuck? Mary, it's Twyla. If you're still interested in helping me, I'll be at the library around noon today. It should be quieter there. And there's some books I want to pick up for research purposes. Meet me there if you can. But if not, I'll just call you up another time. Oh, we're going there. 9.45. Look at these people that get up at different... 8.51 a.m. Get a life, dude. Hey, Mary. I'm sorry. I know I've been acting pretty nasty lately. I hope you know I don't mean it. Have you been to the Planet Dollars yet? I'll be heading there for lunch today. Maybe at, like, 12.30? You should come and have lunch with me. My treat. You have money? Dude, why are we eating spaghetti? And then I can, like... Formally apologize or whatever, dude. I don't care about you. There's no love interest here. Get out of here. Reginald, you are- I'm not picking you. Good morning, Miss Marianta. I hope you're doing well today. You had asked about that book the other day, right? Well, I actually finished it quicker than I expected to. Yeah, because you have no life. I'd really love to give it to you, but I won't be at the library today. I'm actually going to be at the cemetery. Aw, oh, wait. You like that place though, right? Why are you there? You should come see me. Then I can pass the book over to you. Teehee, winky face, weird emoji. I'll be there at a quarter afternoon or so. Oh, we have conflicting agendas, I see. Then maybe after we can grab huh, lunch or something together. I ah, forget it, dude. I hope that doesn't come off weird. I just like some company for my lunch break. Call me back. D little smiley face that's making a kissy mark. Dude, get the fuck out of here. Oh, unknown number. Unknown number. Can't do it. All right, exit phone. Saving. At any second. This is what I love about Ren Renpai. I was messaged by each of them. However, I think I'll only have time to meet up with one of them today. Where should I go to date them? Dude, you know I'm going to the library. It was a tough choice, but I had to choose one of them. It was a tough choice, Bob, but I had to choose one of them. I told the others I had plans, and that I'd have to meet them some other time. F friggin' spaghetti loser. And then w when noon rolled around, I headed to my destination. Why can't you guys do things at things that are the times that aren't noon? Like, what if you just rescheduled, you know? Like, hey, Crovin, I slept in super late, and I'm not feeling hungry. How about we eat at... 145, you know? When I got to the library to meet with Twyla, it was already a little past noon. I had texted her the way there, but I still worried she might already be gone by the time I got there. Why? Why would you be afraid of this? What just happened? I don't know why. She said she'd be there for research, after all. And surely that takes a while. We should have worn something cute. At least, I'm pretty sure it would. Bruh. When I got to the library, I was able to find Twyla, who was coincidentally in my favorite spot of the library. Twyla? Oh, you made it. Sorry, I just got really invested in this book while waiting for you. That's okay. I understand. Oh, what book is it? Celsius 232.7777. Oh, a reference to Fahrenheit 451. Very good book. Kind of. If you like reading. I think it would be better as an anime. Sorry, let me finish this last paragraph, and then we can start. 
I waited patiently for Twyla to finish, and once she did, I watched her place the book onto the wrong spot of the bookshelf and turn to face me. So, are you ready? I mean, yeah, I guess. I don't even remember what we're doing. What exactly- Okay, perfect. Thank you, Mary. What exactly are we doing here, though? Your reports are on the... Uh, remembering what she told me, I whispered the next parts. It's about the butcher, right? Yes, that's why we're here. Butcher slept libraries. This library's got some good books on the history of Blackwood. You don't understand why that's important, do you? Uh, should I? Anyways, we're here to look up stuff about the other serial killers in Blackwood itself. Other killers? Yeah. Before I do much else, I want to make sure this isn't some sort of copycat killer. Oh. You mean like somebody- <laughs> You Could it be related to the, the Black Book- Or the Blackwood- What's a synonym for butcher? A copycat killer? What's that? Do I have to explain everything to you? Oh, yes, break me more. Ah, uh, no. Sorry. A copycat crime is a crime that mimics another. A copycat killer is a killer who bases their murders off previous murders. So, like, murder plagiarism? It could be that they were inspired by a killer to commit the same crimes in similar fashion. And they could even be doing it as a homage to those who inspired them. Okay. I think I get it. So, uh, we're... We're going to research similar crimes and potential killings that have happened in the Blackwood area in the past. Dude, this girl looks like a perfect girl to show you those texts that are on your phone. Not telling you how to live your life, Mary, but she looks like she might be part of the FBI or something. The library's got plenty of book on the subjects and seemingly more useful stuff than the garbage I find online. Based off the statistics I've collected of the recent mysterious deaths, I'm going to research these other killers. Do we have robotic legs? I just noticed that. I've been looking at a robot anime and it reminded me of it called Metabots or whatever. I think that was what it was called. Reminds me of the legs from that. And I see if their method of murder of victims are similar to what's been happening here. Oh, that makes sense. I'm hoping that if it is a copycat, it'll be easier to seek out and catch the real killer. Ah, their socks. That's what they are. I'm going to look for books about Blackwood itself. You should go look in the true crime section and pick out any books that have to do with serial killings. Report whatever you find. Back to me. Got it? Good. I didn't acknowledge it yet. Twyla, wait! Twyla walked off into the library, leaving me to look at for the other books. Except she didn't tell me anything about the statistics she found, so I had no idea what it was I was supposed to be looking for. Dude, just get some cool stuff. I tried to get... Oh, just get any books that mentioned killers in them. I wasn't sure if they mattered how old they were, or if the killer itself was ever even caught. Eventually, Twyla had sat down with a few books and began flipping through them. I kind of just... Kept bringing her new books and putting away books she asked me to. Are we getting paid for this? We ended up spending a long time there. I started getting tired and she didn't want to, ad to admit. But I could see Twyla was starting to get tired too. After a while, we just decided to call it a day. We should open up a true crime business. So, did you find anything useful? Uh, for the most part, not really. But there are a few books I'm going to check out and bring home with me for further research. Oh, that's good, I think. Hey, how about I come over? It's better than nothing. Hey, thanks for helping me. It probably would have taken me longer to find stuff without your help. Yeah, probably. Is that a duck in the top right? Oh yeah, of course, no problem. Hey, can I ask you something? Huh? It's nothing really that important, but why'd you choose this spot in the library? I'm sure that sounds so weird, but I'd love to know. You want to know that of all things? Well, I mean, I just... 
I've been coming to this library for a really long time, and I've never seen anyone in this corner except for me. I just thought it'd be more private and quiet. Is this really an uncommon place to sit? Well, I mean, other than you, I've only seen one other person sit here, and he was weird. I saw him here the other day, actually. Who's that? Oh, he's just an acquaintance of mine I recently met again with a really pretentious name. Is that... Wait, 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 wait! Hold up. Reginald... Tetra? Oh, I mean, I don't know his last name. But, uh... Long caramel hair, rectangle glasses. Kinda has an accent if you listen carefully. Oh, yeah, that's him. Do you know him? Mary, you can't talk to Reginald. Huh? Why not? He's a suspect. He is? Everyone's a suspect, of course. Even I'm a suspect. I was the last person I was suspecting. But I really don't trust that guy. Why? I used to spend a lot of time here, you know. I even worked here for a time. And Reginald was always up to something. Trying to hide the books he was reading. Nope, that's not... He he was trying to share the books with me. Maybe he just didn't like you. With your weird eyebrows. I mean, cute eyebrows. I never saw him check anything out. You watched him that closely? I watched him because he was weird. Yes! Exactly! He would always hid the covers of the books he read. Rearranged the shelves when he was done so you couldn't see what he was reading. And when I would confront him about it, he'd just smile and act as if he wasn't reading at all. I mean, just because someone seems weird doesn't mean that you should, uh, you know. But I saw that what he was reading despite his attempts to hide it. And it's not good. I can't trust a suspicious guy like that and neither should you. What was he reading? I'll try to distance myself from him, girl. Girl talk. He was pretty nice when I'm... No, he wasn't. He was weird. If you really think he's that bad, I'll try to limit my time I spend around him, I guess. Good. You should. But don't let your guard down. Around any everyone else, either. Anyone could be the killer, not just him. But keeping your space is a good idea. Thanks for warning me, I guess. After that... Twyla and I said our goodbyes. I don't know what she did after. She probably went home, Ruby. And by Ruby, I mean whatever your name is, Mary. Ruby is my character. I thought about what she said to me all day. Reginald's behavior seems strange from the way she described it. But he has to have his reasons, right? And it's a bit extreme to accuse him of something so cruel. <laughs> I took the bus home like usual and did the normal nighttime things. Dude, Croven's gonna be pissed. Croven, that's what you get. I'm just saying. Eating up. Washing up. Whatever. And then, it was back to my least favorite part of the day. Eating... Oh, I was gonna say eating dinner with Croven. Hi. Hello. Can we talk about that thing you said the other night? I haven't been able to stop thinking about it ever since you said it. Huh, what's bothering you? You said that you were coming for me. That you just needed more time. Are you really trying to steal me too? <laughs> It'll be alright. I promise. It's for the best. You're gonna make me feel sick all over again. What do you want me to tell you? Tell me that you're not gonna do it. Tell me your first and last name and social security number. <laughs> yeah, right. Then I'll get to see my... Well, they already said if we get captured, doesn't that mean we'll get to see him again? Who the F are you, boy or girl? Is that really what you want? You'll see me soon. But you shouldn't worry about it. It will happen when it happens. This is for the best. Even if you can't see that right now. Even if you can't, ever. When will this be over? So, hopefully, I just need more time. 
You'll hang on for me, won't you? Do I have a choice? Haha! <laughs> Sweet dreams, Mary. Ugh. Thanks. I didn't sleep at all that night. You don't sleep at all any night. You always are having trouble sleeping. Get some tryptophan. I really didn't. There were a few times I shut my eyes and tried to, but nothing could calm me down anymore at this point. My anxiety was through the roof. I just wanted Mom and Dad back. I wanted to know for certain that they were okay. It should have been me that was taken. Uh, what? Rationalize this statement. You have more of your life to live. Maybe it was supposed to be. Oh. Hmm. Okay, I get it. If she... Okay, she was somehow, through her actions, put her mom and dad in danger instead? So she was feeling guilty about it? Is that what that means? The next morning when I got up, Coven was still home. Whoa. He seemed to be acting pretty normal for once. At the very least, not agitated. See, if he spends less time with you, Mary, he's more normal. But despite this, I didn't sit and have breakfast with them. I wasn't in the mood to really talk to anyone, not right now, not after last night. It was too much. I just wanted some private time to myself. I just wanted to cool down. As I was about to leave, Crow called out to me. Not eating breakfast, Mars? Hey. That's one of you call me Mars. I responded. Not today, I'm not hungry. I'm eating with a friend for breakfast. I'm just going to pick something while I'm out. Whew. I mean, a lot of times, people that age aren't very hungry in the morning. They run out the door, and then they realize they're hungry later. I'm meeting with a friend for breakfast. That would be a lie. I have no idea that I'm meeting a friend. And she's not my friend. And I'm definitely not meeting with Reginald, because I've chosen that he's not my friend. I'm just going to pick up something while I'm out. That's involved spending money! <sighs> Dude, I'm not hungry. Not today, I'm not hungry, weirdo. He responded with a simple, Okay! And after that, I was out the door. Boom. I just wanted to go to that place and not be bothered. On the bus ride there, all three of them texted me again. Oh, yes. Crovid said he noticed I left pretty quickly, and I hoped I wasn't upset with him for his behavior lately. I am. Twilight asked about some other progress on her research, and Reginald said he'd be at the cemetery again today. Dude, fuck off. I'm not going to go talk to him. Although I appreciated their messages, I really just needed to be alone. How many saves do we get? Oh my god. Look at them all. Oh, the Splatoon character. I remember them now. I like them. I think they were my favorite one so far. Other than Mary and Twilight and Crobin. I really just needed to be alone. I needed to go back there and just relax. Uh, where? No, that's not the right word. I wasn't going there to relax. I was going there to mourn. Our restaurant? Oh. The Dine Red. It's where I grew up. I lived my whole life in this diner. Restaurant? Bistro? I never know the right word for places like this. We always had such silly names for it since it was next to the cemetery. The rest errant in peace. Sometimes the diner. Oh, that's fun. Even just simply dying dead. <laughs> I always wondered if others caught on. Yes, they probably did, Mary. You probably wouldn't know just from looking at it, but there's two floors. The bottom floor is the diner itself. I've eaten there for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Sometimes all in the same day. The top floor is more like a house. Our house. There's bedrooms and a bathroom. And even a small living space with a TV. It can be a little cramped sometimes, but it's cozy. No one could get up there but me and my parents, of course. The upstairs is locked. You'd need a key. Or be a lock picker. Or break the door. Or many other ways of obtaining entry into something that's only protected by a key. You could literally kick it down, Mary. Which I have, of course! 
After mom and dad went missing, the authorities locked this place up, and it's been locked ever since. We're about to become a suspect, aren't we? Because people were murdered here, and she didn't pro- the Twyla didn't realize that we're the daughter of the, the people. Wait, were they murdered? No, they were kidnapped, that's right. Whatever. They don't want anyone going in there, not even me. Because, I don't know, it's kind of like a crime scene or something. But I still have the key for the front, too. It's my house, after all. I carefully scanned the area around me as I just stood in the parking lot. There were a few cars that passed by, and maybe a person or two on the sidewalk, but no one really seemed to pay me any mind. It was still a bit early in the morning, so it wasn't surprising to see so few people out. I looked over my shoulders a few more times to make sure no one was watching me. Then, I stepped up to the front door, unlocked it, and took a step inside, closing the doors carefully behind me. ka -chink. Whoa! Oh, it does look like a bistro. When I stepped inside, I was instantly hit with a wave of all different kinds of emotions. I had been avoiding the diner for a long time because whenever I passed it, I would just think of mom and dad and feel sad. And now stepping inside, it felt nice. At least a little bit. Just being able to be in my own house after so long. It was bittersweet. On one hand, I felt so happy just to be home. Everything was just as I had left it. The light still entered in through the windows the same way it always did. It still smelled faintly of delicious food, even though the kitchen hasn't been used in a while. Even Mom's specials board was in the same spot. But it felt so empty, so desolate, so abandoned. There wasn't even any electricity here. The place was hardly ever empty. We always had customers, and the diner always did well. There was hardly a moment where I'd come downstairs and only see Mom or Dad. There was always people, even if it was just one person was... Oh, even if just one person was there. The counter would be full of coffee drinkers at night and in the mornings. I'd see families come by for dinner, or people out on dates come here. The music suddenly stopped and it kind of scared me. Okay, thank you. I always loved being able to see that. There were so many good memories in this place. Like, my 13th birthday, which was just this year, because I forget how old Mary is. The married couple that came in, the time we had a Halloween party. I'm choosing? This matters? My 13th birthday. Not to say I didn't enjoy my following birthdays or previous birthdays, but my 13th birthday was especially enjoyable. That was the day my parents got me a tarantula. I had been begging them for months, and they finally gave in and let me get one. I'd always loved tarantulas, despite the way others often view them. I like tarantulas. They're spider bros. Or maybe it was in spite of how people viewed them. I always knew they were gentle. If you were nice to them, the way you should be. I picked the biggest and fuzziest one that they would allow me to get. I named her Shelly. And I'd collect seashells to put in her enclosure. Oh, this is cute. I even put little bows on the outside of it. I always wanted to show Shelly to others, but of course, they didn't like her as much as I did. I really love Shelly, but... She ended up getting sick. Oh no, really sick. None of the vets could even figure out what was wrong with her. Around some time last year, she died. I was so miserable, I didn't even want to eat. But my mom knew my weaknesses. She began making my favorite foods for me. And it was hard being hungry and miserable at the same time. Even though it was just food, it helped me feel a lot better. Standing here, it's almost as if I could smell her still making it. And Dad would sit with me at the counter and make sure I got my fair share of Dad puns for the day. I loved being able to sit with them and eat and just joke around. But now, all covered in dust. And no one's here. Except for me. Where should I go? Oh boy. We're going to save. 
Hmm. I want to see my room. Show me my room. I decided to head up to my room. My real room. Oh, that now that's what I'm talking about. What's that a reference to in the top left? Looks like maybe Soul Eater. <laughs> I, I depressed my little pony. <laughs> oh. Black. What does that say? Blackout Hospital? I know that's a reference to something. And I know those are references over there. I just can't think of them at this exact second. As I stepped inside, I felt strangely happy. I missed my old room and all my stuff. It felt so nice to be back even if I wasn't staying. Why is she not allowed to stay in her room? It's a crime scene? Just the sense of familiarity made me feel so calm. I wish I was able to take some of this stuff back home with me, but I didn't have anything to carry it in. When was the last time I was even in this room? I sat on my own bed. It was just as comfy as I remembered it. The bed in the cabin was nice, but it just couldn't compare. It's got some serious pomp energy. I missed having a canopy above me. I've had this bed ever since I was a little girl. I remember dad tucking me into this bed and reading me bedtime stories when I was too fussy to sleep right away. Haha. Uh -huh. It didn't take long for me to start crying. I missed my bed, I missed my house, I missed my parents. I remember my mom wishing me a good night one day and then disappearing the very next. I hadn't heard from them since. They could be dead right now and I wouldn't even know. I didn't want to think about that, but could I really ignore the possibility if it meant... Ma just hated this situation I was in. Every little thing about it. I wanted to scream, but what good would that do? I felt helpless. We're feeling a lot of things right now. Just pick up a pillow and yell into it. It's good for you. All I could do was just sit, cry, and wait for it to be over. Dude, show Twilight your room. I ended up falling asleep in my old bed. I was already exhausted from my lack of sleep, and crying certainly didn't help in that respect. When I was when I woke up, I was unaware of how much time had passed. But I felt groggy, and I didn't think I should stay any longer. It'd probably just make me feel worse. I got up from the bed and began to head back downstairs. It wasn't until I got to the bottom of the stairs that I noticed. Someone was there. Some stranger kneeling in front of the doorway for whatever reason. I was almost frozen in my spot. Who were they? Why were they here? N no, no one should have been able to get in. This place was... That's right. I unlocked it. Crap. I stood there hoping they wouldn't see me. The way they were dressed with baggy dark clothes and their hood up, they told me they were almost likely bad news. Did they follow me in here? I wasn't sure what to do. I thought about trying to escape out the back way or sneakily heading back upstairs if need be, but as soon as I took a step back, I tripped slightly and let out a small yelp as I caught myself on one of the bar stools. The stranger immediately bolted outside. What? Wait! I wasn't able to. Oh, I wasn't even able to get a good look at them. For a split second, I considered trying to chase after them. And even if that wasn't a stupid idea, they ran much faster than I could keep up with anyways. Panicked and slightly shaking, I took out my phone. Maybe they're just a speedy hobo. 
I hit one with my car once. I was so nervous, I pressed it to my ear without even having dialed anyone yet. <laughs> she just standing there with her phone on her ear. <laughs> oh boy. Who are you gonna call? Kesa to this. No, I can't do that. I was already here and I wasn't supposed to be. And I don't want to put any kind of attention on myself. But I can't just call nobody. I have to tell someone about this. <laughs> Who do I go to? Call Reginald. He's close by. Call Twyla. Could it have been the killer? Call Crovin. He's family. He'll know what to do. Call Mystery Number. Hey, was that cute? <laughs> hey. I saw you today. You creep. What are you doing here? I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. I think... Ugh. <laughs> that would be so funny. He's just not going to pick up. They're just not going to pick up. Oh, I want to tell Twyla about this. Dude, give her... I hurriedly called Twyla. It could have been the Blackwood Butcher that was in here. And if I don't want to go to the cops, she's the next best thing, right? I mean, if anyone could tell me... Oh, it was the Butcher, she'd probably be able to. I hope... Come on, Twyla, pick up already. Twyla speaking. That's exactly how I answer the phone. Tw Twyla, Twyla! I need you to get over here, quick! What? Why? Where even are you? The diner by the cemetery. You have to come quick. I think the butcher was here. What? Are you serious? Don't move and don't touch anything. I'm coming right now. Oh, maybe this was not a good idea. It felt like I waited forever for Twyla to arrive. I stood in the diner alone, just standing there. Waiting. Possibly shaking. I don't remember it that well. But I didn't move from the spot I stood in. She did tell me not to touch anything after all. You touched your bed, though. When she arrived, she didn't even give me a chance to say hi. She immediately started talking and came in holding some weird box. I told her that whoever it was probably long gone by now, but she said we were going to look for clues. I complied doing whatever she asked of me. We searched the building together, and I made sure I was always in the same room as Twyla. Just in case. Unfortunately, we couldn't find anything that would point us to who it might have been. There were no stray hairs or torn fabrics. Twyla even dusted for fingerprints. But we could only find hers and my own. It was almost as if no one was here at all. But when we checked my parents' room, I noticed one of my mother's necklaces was missing from her drawer. It was the necklace my father had given her for their anniversary a few years back. But she couldn't have taken it with her. Unless she was wearing it. Huh. I guess why would she wear it, though? I remember seeing it here, checking the diner after my parents first disappeared. Did they take it? That thought put my stomach in knots. To think they must have been here while I was dozing off in the other room. Oh, God. I don't... Why? Ugh. After searching for what felt like an eternity, we just gave up. There was nothing more we could do here. It felt bad calling for Twyla's help just to wind up with nothing. Bruh. She w she liked it. It's like clues. I don't think there's anywhere else we can look. Yet. I know. I... I'm sorry. I dragged you all the way here. I thought at the very least this could help your investigation. But there's nothing really here. It's fine. It's not a total loss. Can you at least remember anything about the suspect? I... No. 
I didn't get a, really get a good look at them. It could have been anyone. Huh. Well, whatever. Whether they're the butcher or not, someone has a, a special interest in this place. And is definitely worth looking into. Yeah. I'm definitely keeping an eye on this place. Maybe we can catch them next time they come back. Dude, if they rob this place, they're not coming back if someone like even remotely saw them. How do you plan to do that? I learned the way that burglars actually rob homes. Are you ready? They It happens almost always through the front door. And if it doesn't happen through the front door, it happens through the back door. They literally just walk into your house, maybe break the break the door handle very quickly. They run into the master bedroom. They take the pillows out of the case. So now you got two pillowcases. They fill the pillowcases. They literally run out of the house less than just a couple minutes and just run. They don't even get into a car. Sometimes they get into a car. They just run. That's it. That's how you get robbed. Isn't that dumb? That's why you're not supposed to keep valuables in your main room. Put them in a safe in your bathroom or something. Don't remember where I learned this. I'm not a burglar, by the way. Don't worry about it. I have my ways. But you probably shouldn't come back. It might mess up the investigation. Oh, all right. That's probably smart anyways. Thanks for helping me, Twyla. Yeah, whatever. Just don't come back here and mess anything up, okay? And after a little while, Twyla left, leaving me standing alone there once again. Dude, Twyla is literally the best character in this game. Oh my gosh, so abusive. I stepped outside, and she drove off, locked the front doors behind me, wondering if that would be enough to stop whatever broke in from doing it again. She li didn't even offer to drive you home? I take light offense to this. I stayed in crowded areas the rest of the day, hoping that being around so many people would provide some sense of safety. Like, literally. I'm a shaken, younger female that just interacted with what I thought was a burglar. Not even going to offer to drive me home? I bet she did offer and we refused. It was just off screen. That's that's my headcanon right now. The only time I was alone again that day was when I went back home that night. But I'm never truly alone then either, am I? Oh, yeah. Texting the creeper. Hello again. Good evening. Is that you in my diner today? Eh, what do you mean? Earlier today, I was in my diner. Or house, I guess. There was a stranger. I couldn't see their face. And they ran out as soon as I realized I was behind them. Was that you? Nope. I don't know why I bothered asking. I doubt you'd give me the truth either way. Sometimes lying will be necessary. Oh, maybe it was. But I am telling the truth now. But what if you're lying about telling the truth? If you say so, I'm not really sure what else to say. That's okay. I prefer when you don't ask questions. Want to play, like, Jackbox games? Why's that? You know what they say. Curiosity kills the cat. Good night, Mary. So much for getting a good night's sleep. Dots. da 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 dots da 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 are you still sleeping? Mary. No, oh, I don't want to get up yet. Let me sleep. I had a long late or oh, a long night last night. A long night? You went to bed at eight thirty. I didn't sleep well. Well, your mother's making pancakes if you want any. Do they have chocolate chips? Of course, it's Sunday. Okay, I'll be down soon. Oh my gosh, Lolly Mary. I quickly got out of bed and got dressed, yawning as I descended the stairs, wearing exactly the same clothing as when I'm an adult. Even from the top of the stairs, I could smell the chocolate. She's dedicated to the outfit, and she rocks it. If you don't hurry, I'm going to eat all of them. Dad. Oh, you know I'm just teasing you. Besides, your mom would kill me if I did. Oh, we're so happy. I got downstairs. I sat at the counter. Beside my dad. There was a plate waiting for me, and my mother was behind the counter drinking her morning coffee like usual. We're so happy. This is like such a perfect family. Thank you for breakfast, Mom. Of course, dear. The kid even said thank you. So, do you have any plans for today? 
No, not really. Ah, uh, is Croven busy today? I don't know, probably. Well, we can always do something if you want. What is with this family? We can? Of course we can. Didn't you want to see that new movie? The horror one with the janitor. Why don't we go tonight? Oh, wait. Is this... Is this the day it happens? Are you sure? Aren't you busy? You know I'm never too busy for my little girl. That sounds really fun, but what about Mom? Are you really worrying about me? I'll be fine, sweetheart. Go out with your father. We can even call up Crow and see if he wants to come too. I've been really looking forward to this movie. I'm so excited now. This morning's been quite the pleasant surprise, but something feels, uh, off. Like I'm forgetting something. No, something is weird here. But what? What's wrong? It's way too empty here. Oh, that's correct. Normally, there's always people here. Hmm. Coffee? Oh. Hmm. Pancakes. There's <laughs> there aren't any utensils. That's correct. You're just gonna eat them with your face. It. Th that's consistent, isn't it? We said there's always people here. No, that's not it. It's Sunday. Do you close on Sunday? Wouldn't that be a massive business day for a diner? We don't open past noon on Sundays because Mom likes us all to have a nice breakfast together. Wow. It's still morning, so... <laughs> what? What's wrong? Coffee? Do I get to read all of them? I maybe do want to read all of them. I bet it's utensils. I really hate coffee, but Mom's always left hers black. It's no different today. It still seems to be steaming, but that's never stopped Mom before. I just want to read all of them. Dad's fine. He's as chipper as ever, and he brushed his hair this morning, too. Good old dad. Mom. <laughs> Mom sorry. Mom's always... Wait. Mom can't talk. Mom is mute. Mom's never been able to talk her whole life. I had to learn sign language as a kid to be able to communicate with her. She's never... Whose voice even was that? That was talking to me. My mom doesn't even have a voice. What's going on? Mary? You okay, hun? You look like you've seen a ghost. I'm fine. Are you sure, dear? I could make you some tea to help you calm down if you're feeling anxious. No, no, I'm okay. I think I'm just gonna uh, go to the bathroom. That's right, get in that bathroom. I hopped out of my seat and rushed my way over to the ground floor bathroom. That wasn't my mom. Was that even my dad? I was hoping that once in the bathroom I could rinse my face off. Rinse my face off. What? I could rinse my face. Oh, face. Oh, real. Okay, sorry. You're not taking your face off. Okay, geez, please. It makes sense of things, but. It. Well, wait. What the? What? Hey, this book. M Mom? Mom, what are you doing here? I just saw you in the other room. Weren't you just outside? Mom? I think it was a spook. I think the mom might have been dead in that situation. What's the matter, Mary? I thought you liked ghosts. There's a funeral today. I'm happy. Was that bad? I'd been planning for it. I overheard them talking about it in the cemetery when planning for a spot for her. Was that bad? I really enjoy funerals. I always have. Even when... I like to see everyone gather around for their lost loved one. They're all so sad. They bring flowers and sometimes even little parting gifts. That's so nice, don't you think? If their spirits could talk, I bet they'd say they appreciate it. 
Would a ghost attend their own funeral? I would. Well, in any case, I'm excited for the one today. And I'm excited to see what they're like. Hopping off the bus that morning, I was so glad to see I wasn't too late. It's a good thing I always wear black. No one even seemed to turn their head to me as I came near. It also started to rain. So much raining, so much stuff happening all at once. They never said anything about rain today, but I thought it would... Oh, it might when I saw the clouds out this evening or morning. So I came prepared and brought my umbrella. It was then I noticed a little old lady with no umbrella. Oh, that sucks. Prepare better next time. And no one was even bothering to help her dry. So I covered her with my umbrella. You just, you just pitied a random person? Ah, oh, Mary, you're a nice person. Oh, it's an umbrella. Yes. You scared me for a second. Uh, thank you, dear. Of course. <laughs> Pardon me if this sounds rude, but were you one of her friends? No, at least I don't think so. Who died? <laughs> well, they're going to know. Oh, so we're telling the truth here. You're allowed to you're allowed to be at other people's funerals even though that's that's not horribly inappropriate. Is it? It's a little I think it'd be a little weird. Huh. Let's try this one. Uh, oh. Well, it was my darling Minspella. She passed just last week. <laughs> My condolences. Forgive me if this sounds rude, but, uh... What is your relationship to her? Uh, me? Ah. Yes. I'm Spella's mom. Oh. I never met you before, have I? That's okay. Lots of people haven't. I'm very sorry for your loss. How are you feeling? That's maybe not something to say to a clearly grieving mother standing at a funeral. Feeling? It's impossible for me to feel anything but heartbroken. I truly don't believe I'll ever recover from this. <laughs> now, now, don't say that. She wouldn't want you to think like that, right? Oh, yeah, just be... Just... Be put, what is that? Patronizing to the poor grieving woman randomly. Y Mary, you're holding an umbrella. Y don't. Yes, I suppose you're right. Oh, okay. If she takes it, we're good. If I may, had she die? She was young, wasn't she? Oh, God. Oh, it's, uh, you do not have to. I'm sorry if it was too intrusive. She was sick, you see, for a very long time. She was in the hospital for a while. We always thought that she was going to get better. It always seemed that way, at least. In the end, well, things didn't go as we thought they would. I see. I'm sorry that happened. I'm I'm sorry. I was just thinking, like, what if Mary was being, like, totally cash about it? Oh, that sucks. Sorry for your loss. She's probably, like, actually feeling bad. It's all right. We tried our best. Do you think she's scared? Eh? She's all alone now. Where's she gonna go? And who will tell her how to get there? The way she is right now. Is she happy? Even if she's not. She's not alone. A lot of people die. How can you say she's alone when everyone is here beside her? Oh, that's even cuter. 
I know she can't really say much about it, but I'm sure she's happy to have all her friends and family by her side. All the people here. She meant a lot to them, didn't she? That's why they're all here to keep her company. I know lots of people like to think you're alone when you die, but I think it's hard to consider all this being alone, you know. She's not alone when you're here. Yes, I suppose that's true. We're all together here, aren't we? Then, I suppose I'm glad she isn't alone. Yeah, me too. I'm sorry I've upset you by talking about her so much, miss. It's a funeral after all. I should behave more respectfully. No, no, it's quite alright. Talking about it has actually helped a little bit. I feel a bit better hearing your thoughts. Is that so? I'm glad then. Yes, thank you. Why, I'm so sorry. I didn't even catch your name. It's all right. My name is Mary. Mary? Mary. Ah! Hold on a moment. Do you mean to say your Cemetery, Mary. I see my reputation precedes me. Yes, that's me. I see. No, she was going to say, oh, no, I meant like Mary Spitzenoodle from the fifth from Finland coming over from the plane ride because of running away from territorial claims of their kingdom. But Cemetery Mary works, too. Thank you, Mary. If Spella was here, I'm sure she'd want to thank you, too. She is here, but... Hearing it from you means enough already. Thank you as well. All right, I'm going to split. She just leaves her brain dripping on her head. Let me get this straight. The mother of the, <laughs> the daughter that just died was standing in a group of people. And they were just watching her get rained on. <laughs> uh, it was a lovely funeral. The coffin was lowered and soon enough the rain stopped. I watched everyone say their goodbyes to her and to each other, and then, steadily, they left. Soon, it was just me and the lady. You're still there? I'd have felt bad if I'd overstayed my welcome. I didn't want to outlast her at her own daughter's funeral. So I quietly said my goodbyes and left. But to my surprise, someone was there waiting for me on the sidewalk. Please be Twilla. Please be Twilla. Oh, hell yeah. Twilla, what are you doing here? I saw you from behind the fence. You were at a funeral. Did another person die already? Uh, no. Well, yes, but not someone I know. Okay, then. Anyways, I'm glad I ran into you here. I was actually thinking of calling you, but you're already here, so... Oh, why? Do you need something? Yes, there was something I wanted to check out. But you might be able to help me with it. Oh, sure. I'll help. Is this still about, uh, the, you know, the butchering stuff? Of course it is. Why else would I be hanging out with you? You and I are not on the same level. I'm like a nine. You're maybe like a six and a half, maybe seven. What else would it would be about? I don't know. Maybe like we're friends or something? Ah, right. Sorry. That was silly of me to ask. I'm not sure how much help I could be, but I'll try. It's fine. You don't need to do much. You just need to stand there and ask for something. I'm good at that. That won't be a problem for you, will it? I don't see how it would be. It seems easy enough for me. So, where are we going? <laughs> Follow me. It's only a few blocks down from here. Okay, here we go. We're gonna rob a bank. Watch. I need you to keep asking for identification and act like you're not confused and delirious. I followed Twilla down the sidewalk. We didn't really talk as we walked, but I enjoyed her company nonetheless in the bounce of her eyebrows. The sky remained cloudy and the sidewalk was full of puddles we tried to avoid. <coughs> 
until eventually we ended up where Twilla planned to be today. Oh, it was a bookstore. Nice. One, I sometimes passed by, but never really bothered to look inside. It didn't seem as cozy as, or as comforting, or as free as the library. The library. Uh, bookstore? Twilla, if you'd need books, why don't we just go to the library? It's much bigger. Hey, can you, like, shut up? Oh, yeah. Huh? What did I tell you earlier? Oh, right. You just need me to stand there and ask for something, right? That's it. Besides, we're not here for books. We're not? No. But you don't need to worry about why we're here. I just need you to do this for me. What are we doing again? Let's just say I'm not allowed in this bookstore anymore. Tuella, what'd you do? I mean, I'm not planning on fixing that problem in... Oh, but I just need to do this now. Did you shoplift? Did you take pictures of the books? Did you vandalize stuff? What'd you do? That's where you come in. You're gonna go in there and talk to the man at the desk. Put some moves on him. He likes dead girls. I need you to get him to look in the back somehow. Then, once he does, signal back to me out here. I'll get what I need and then out. Got it? You're going to- <laughs> She is gonna steal- <laughs> Twilla, I don't know. I don't know if you're right about this. You don't know the person? Come on, Twilla's hot. Mary, it's for the investigation. Okay, fine. Do you think I'd just steal for the fun of it? I don't know. I haven't, like, seen a badge. You could just be weird. Or do you want people to keep dying left and right? Hey, that's an ultimatum. I don't appreciate being manipulated by that, like, like that. I mean, no, of course not. But. Well, sometimes you'll have to do bad things to be the good guy. I agree. I agree with this statement. But we're not, uh, we're talking about people's lives here. Do you really want to risk someone's life because you didn't want to lie for a few minutes? Like, what if you just put money for the book in another book? You know, they're going to naturally look around the other books. <laughs> what if I just threw money at him and then left? There's a way to do this without stealing, Twilla. I'm just saying. That's a bit extreme, isn't it? I guess you have a point. I mean, uh, if, uh, if it's really helping the investigation, then, uh, can't you get it like a Kindle book? Okay, fine. You twisted my arms. I'll do it. There you go. Now get in there and do your thing. All right. Walks in like all creepy seductive. Heard you like dead girls. I stepped into the store at Twilla's command. I already felt guilty before it even happened. But if this was somehow helping someone, then... If this is Reginald, I'm going to freak out. Please don't be Reginald. It was worth doing, right? Please don't be Reginald. Please, please don't be Reginald. As I entered, I noticed the man behind the desk, and it wasn't Reginald. Thank God, okay. All right, what's wrong with your head? He was old and pretty scruffy and had a hook for a hand. That probably makes it hard to do your job as a book bookseller. I was surprised he was even able to see out of all that hair that covered his eyes. He seemed pretty big. And on top of it all, he had a hook for a hand. Oh, maybe he's a suspect. He certainly gave quite the first impression without even having said anything. Okay, we're gonna be like all FBI, very like assertive. We're gonna pretend we're a secret agent. Secret agent Mary. He didn't even turn to me when I entered. Could he even see me, actually? Is this who Twilla was worried about getting past? I stepped up to the counter. Uh, um, uh... Sir? Eh. What do you want? Oh, uh... Um, uh... I noticed you didn't have a name tag on. What kind of books you got here? How are you today, sir? I don't give a fuck about how his day is. Eh? 
Hey, what about it? Well, how am I supposed to refer to you? You are in a public service situation and I need to be able to refer to you. It's called a handle. It's part of society. Oh, well, it's just, you know, uh, what? what's your name? Who wants, <laughs> who wants to know? Uh, I do. It ain't important. Uh-huh. He couldn't be the guy that's texting me because he doesn't have fucking hands. Ah, uh, okay. Is there something I can help you with, ma'am? Oh, right. Uh, I'm looking for a book. Do you sell anything other than books here? I just wanted to say hi. <laughs> yes. Oh, I'm looking for a book. That ain't too specific. Tuesday Adams. Are you making fun of me? Why does everyone make fun of Mary? Oh, uh, it's by, uh, it's about, it's about an author named, uh, Horace. H Horace Cope. Can't say I've heard of him. What's the book about? Um, um, the, the Zodiac. Yeah, it's about the Zodiac signs and astrology and stuff. So, a book about astrology and zodiac signs, written by Mr. Horace Cope? Yeah, that's right. Maybe you should go into the back and look for it. Go, 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 go! I'll tell you what. I ain't ever heard of the guy. I'll check in the back for you. Oh, we did it! Oh, thank you so much! After the ad exchange, the man went to check in the back for my books. I, I totally stole that joke from the popsicle stick, but... Wait, I didn't even get it, it was a joke. Horace Cope? Horace Cope. Oh, I'm so dumb, I don't get it. He seemed to fall for it, so I guess whatever works. All right, get in here. Twilla, get in here. After you left the back room, I signaled to Twilla that she could sneak in. How did you signal? What did you use as a signal? I want to know. Did you, like, do some, like, air sign? <laughs> like some nerdy FBI combat ninja thing? Like the two fingers ninjutsu? Like, go, go, go. Except... Twilla didn't tell me what to signal with, so I kind of just flailed my arms and hands a bit until she noticed me perfect. I felt really bad about it, going behind the bear's back like that. And it's not your problem, you don't know him. But if doing this meant catching someone dangerous, then... Exactly, it's not like you're stealing for yourself. Twilla was in and out quicker than I expected. As I... If she knew exactly where she was looking. I would have followed her, but I was waiting for that man to come back. I wondered if she still needed me, or if it... She went on her way after leaving. But before I could even think too much about it, he came back. He said he didn't have anything like what I was looking for. But he did give me something. How to talk to... How to talk to ghosts. What the fuck? Save it. Wait, how did... How did he know? He said it looked like something I'd like. He even gave it to me free of charge. Oh, now I feel like garbage. Was just taking up space, he said. Probably costs less than 30 cents to make, he said. I wished him a good day, and then I was on my way. Well, technically, you didn't steal Twilla did. Let's just think of it like that. <sighs> to my surprise, Twilla was still waiting for me once I got out of the bookstore. Oh, Twi is am I saying that right? Twila, Twila? T-W-Y-L-A. Sounds ethnic. Like, cool ethnic, though. You're still here. Um, yeah. I'm still here. What fucking took you so long? Oh, well, he gave me a book and, uh... Hey, wait. Can I ask what you took from him? Now? Does it matter? Well, yeah, like, is it a cook cooking book? Is it a dating book? You know what really pretty nice? Like How to Talk to Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. I feel like maybe you need it. <clears throat> I mean, well, kinda. He was really nice to me, and it's not as if you've told me much about why we did it. Huh. Fair enough. Fine, I'll show you. Oh, okay, she is reasonable. But only if you get into my car with me. Oh, absolutely. Huh? Well, since you're supposed to be helping me and all, I wanted to bring you to my house for, uh, an interrogation, if you will.
Oh, I am 100% behind this. Interrogation. The main reason I asked you to help is because your family members were involved in a mysterious death. So I wanted to ask you some questions about them and take down some notes. Yes, absolutely yes. But not here. I don't even like talking about this out loud. Yes, the answer is yes. Going now. Get into the car. So I'll call up a car to come pick us up. You're not going to drive me? You're fine coming with me, right? Yes. Oh, um, I mean, sure. Yes. I don't really have any other plans. Yeah, I figured. Oh, yeah. Absolutely going into the car with... Twilla called up a car to come pick us up. And the car... Why did I just lose... Sorry, one second. Huh. Is this one of those taxi service things? Huh? No. I'm just really rich. I... Yes, I knew it. Oh, my God. Oh. All right. Shortly enough, a car rolled by to come pick us up. The driver came out and held the door open for Twi Twilla. Oh, now I'm forgetting how I said it. Twilla and I. She crawled into the back seat and I followed suit. Buckling into the car seat, it felt incredibly strange. Crowen's family always had a bit of money themselves, but never like this. It's just <laughs> she got to the back of the car and is just filled with, with giant bags of money. Yes, my family is very rich. I can't go anywhere without a million dollars in cash in the back seat. Anyways, you want to see what I took, right? Uh, yes, please. Twilla reached around and presented me with a wooden box. Wait, we saw the wooden box yesterday. I wanted to see the book. It wasn't until she opened it that I felt alarmed. Whoa! What is it? <gasps> a knife? You stole a knife from him? How do you even know he had this? That's not important, she said, closing the box, putting it back down. I like how it's a little, like, pillowed thing. It's <laughs> not in, it's just, like, a cradled knife. It's a, it's a beauty box. Oh, wait, was that knife disguised as a book? Oh, maybe that's what it was. Is this connected to why he doesn't let you in his store anymore? No. But again, that's not important. Do you think he was using that to... You know... Huh? Well, I can't say for sure. But it's anyone's guess. Don't you feel safer that he doesn't have it on him? Uh... <laughs> I guess I suppose, but what if he's protecting himself? I mean, I guess, but listen, we did the right thing, according to me. Trust me. Oh, okay. Ugh. I'll give it back to him after this is all through, and he's proven innocent, okay? Yes, that's normally how confiscation of evidence works. What if he notices it's gone and thinks I took it? Well, then, probably a good idea you don't go back there. Wait, no, he wouldn't think that you took it because he gave you a book and you were just standing there. What, he, he thought that you took the knife, stood there with the knife the whole time like you were going to murder him? We sat in silence the rest of the car right? Maybe, I don't know. I guess we, I was the only person in there probably that whole day. We sat in silence the rest of the car ride. When I looked at Twilla, it was like she was staring off very intently at nothing at all. I think that's her default expression. I don't think I've seen her with a different one. She looked like she was going over ideas in her head. Deep in thought. I didn't want to disrupt her process or anything. Ask her if we can stop at McDonald's. Twilla had just told me she was rich. So rich! that she had a chauffeur to drive her wherever she needed to be. But despite that, I didn't expect her to be this rich. We had to pass through a gate to even get in. Is that... That's your definition of rich? A gated community? Oh, okay, there we go. She had a fountain in the front, and it was shooting gold coins. Oh my goodness, Twilla, you really live like this. Yeah, I told you I was rich, didn't I? 
We got out of the car together and the chauffeur drove us slowly. We eat spaghetti five times a week. As soon as I exited, my nose was bombarded with the smell of freshly cut grass and fragrant flowers that adorned the front of the house. Even though it had been raining today, nothing smelled like the dampness of rain or even overly affected by it. That's called Petriker. It felt like I was just stepped out to an entirely new planet. By the way, I live with my uncle. Ugh. I'm pretty sure he's home right now. Ugh. Mem. You might have to say hi to him. Okay. What? And how am I going to be referred to? Your friend? Am I your friend? Oh, that's fine. I'm just warning you because he can be kind of sleazy. Uh, oh, hardly has a good attitude and often flirts with girls he doesn't know. I see. Yeah, but like now that I think about it, it's usually only for pretty girls, so you should be fine. Oh my god. <sighs> I see. We walked up the tall staircase in front and Twilla unlocked the double doors. Oh my god. He looks just like you. Is there anything? Is that a cane or a sword that he's holding? I think it's, I think it's a cane. It's like a pimp cane. As soon as we got inside, it appeared as if his uncle was leaving. Ah, uh, Twilla home already? Yeah, I needed to bring someone over for some business. Ah, uh, I see. Well, I was just about to head out myself. But it'd be rude of me not to introduce myself, of course. I'm Denzin. And what would your name be, little lady? I'm Mary. Oh, my name is Mary. It's nice to meet you, sir. A pleasure to meet you as well. Anyways, I ought to take my leave now. Yeah, piss off. I'll be running late if I stay any longer. Oh! I'll leave you little ladies to your business. And perhaps I'll see you again soon. I hope so. I hope you see me again, like, literally tomorrow. And after that, he was gone. Your uncle. <sighs> looks like a cartoon supervillain. Yeah, I know. He looks idiotic. It's embarrassing being related to him. Well, I don't know if I'd go that far. Come on, I didn't bring you here to talk about my uncle. Let's go. Twilla led me through her house. It was pretty big on the inside and very nicely decorated. Did you see that fish picture on the wall? To think there was... She just lived here felt wild. I didn't even get a, too good of a look at her home, though. Twilla led me to a room that looked like a den, almost. Or maybe some kind of storage room? Compared to the rest of the house, it seemed a bit messy. As if the room itself belonged to a completely different house. There were instruments near the walls and small tables with playing cards spread across them. There were lots of cabinets and drawers, but I had no idea what they might be holding. It was strange, but somehow cozy as well. Like some sort of tucked away activity room. Twilla led me to one of the tables and told me to take a seat while she readied herself. I sat and waited for her to be ready as she pulled out a laptop as well as a notepad and some other things. She sat across from me and opened her laptop. What once she had everything prepared, aren't you supposed, okay, so if this is a legal thing, aren't you supposed to like plead the fifth, right? Just be like, I politely decline to answer that question and take my fifth. Isn't that? Hmm. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. The entire aura of the room felt different. It felt compressed, full of pressure. Like this really was some sort of interrogation. She literally said she was going to interrogate you. Like I was somehow in trouble. Take the fifth. I'm going to ask you a few questions, Mary. I want to know about your aunt and uncle that died. Be honest. Tell me all the details. What if I wasn't honest, though? Is this an actual interrogation? Maybe we need to throw her off her trail. Okay. What should I do? I said I wanted to help Twilla, but do I really want to tell her the truth of everything that's happened? 
Hmm. I know she's doing it for a good cause, but... Is the game literally telling me to lie right now? She is still a stranger to me. I hardly know anything about her. Is this like a low-key clue to lie? But if I lie, well, she'll be able to tell. The game was literally telling me to lie right now. Would it ruin the investigation? If I lie about what really happened? Am I offering the butcher another chance to get away? Would I share blame if someone dies because I didn't tell the truth? Why did why did they bring so much attention to to telling the truth or not? That seems really weird to me. Ask away. Whenever you're ready. All right then. To start, how old were your aunt and uncle? Oh, pfft. dude, the game is literally telling me to lie. But I don't want to lie to her. I can't lie to her. She's too hot. Dude, you can't, you can't control me. Oh, well, they, uh, they were both very old, like, whew, retired, actually, too. They could easily be mistaken for my grandparents. And they were married for a long time, before my own parents were even married. I don't remember exactly how old, but they were definitely up there, like, hundreds. Oh, uh, next question, I guess? Right. So, were you ever given permission to suspect they may be dying soon? Huh? H how do you mean? Well, before they died, were you ever worried they would die soon? Mmm, I get it now. I mean, maybe a little bit. No one lives forever, you know. That's not what she meant, Mary. It's not like they were the healthiest either, but because the way they died was so unusual, it just came as such a shock. I see. Of course, that brings me to ask, how did they die? Mm. Well, they went on a date, I'm pretty sure. One of those, like, early bird special deals you always see old people go to in the movies and TV. Mary, you are a very good liar. Because already you just created a consistency. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Anyways, I was told that while they were eating, my uncle became, began suffering from a heart attack or something. A heart attack? He wasn't choking? N no, he wasn't. Did he eat something strange? I, I don't know. I don't think he had many, if any, allergies, but I guess it's possible he could have been allergic reaction or something. Go on. Well, he was rushed to the hospital, and by the time he arrived, he was already dead. The doctors were unable to save him. Yes, that's the definition of arriving dead at a hospital. I suppose so. And he never had any heart problems or allergy issues before this. Not that I know of, no. And? And, and what? Your, oh, <laughs> your aunt. How did she die? Oh, r right, right. Well, my aunt was very distraught over the news, and she passed shortly after. We're not entirely sure how, but we still think she might have suffered from her own heart complications. You think? Well, uh, um, she was found dead in their house, slumped over the kitchen table. Blood coming out of her mouth, too, so... And you don't know how she died. Well, that could be anything. Anything could cause you to die bleeding from your mouth over a kitchen table. She was just found that way? Y yes. I see. And that's all you know about this? Yep, that's all. Pinky swear. I had thought they died of natural causes, but... Um... Like you, I'd heard rumors about a potential killer, and I started to wonder if their deaths were really natural at all. I wonder... Okay, I'm wondering if the reason we're supposed to lie is because we're, we we don't want Twilla to investigate how those people died. It Like, the game made it a very clear flag that you were supposed to not lie here. But maybe I'm wrong and just 
Wasting your time. Ahaha. Uh, um. I see. Well. I think that's all I need. Uh, yeah, that's it. Nice darts. Twella typed up some final words before closing her laptop and getting up from her chair. She's so small, her feet wouldn't be able to touch the floor if she was sitting in that chair. That, that, that's it? We're done? Yes, that's all I need right now. Thank you for agreeing to come talk with me. I was a bit aback by how short it took. Well, well yeah, she just had a very specific set of questions about your aunt and uncle. We traveled all the way to Twilla's house just to talk for a short while. She didn't even ask me for their names or anything. I don't even know what sort of information she really got out of it. Hmm. So, if you're trying to identify a killer, you're always ha you're pairing opportunity with motivation. And if Mary neither had opportunity nor motivation to kill, she wouldn't have answered the way she answered, right? Maybe we're being suspected. I doubt I was being overly helpful. So, uh, what do we do now? Well, I'll be continuing my own research, but you can go home for now. Can I get driven all fancy-like? Really? That's all you needed me for? Mm-hmm. I'm surprised I didn't hear about your aunt and uncle earlier. A situation like that usually tends to garner some attention, but, uh, as I said... It feels as though the police may be trying to cover some things up. And who can blame them? Our city is shitty enough as it is. The last thing we need is couple people thinking there's a killer on the loose. There, There is a killer on the loose. It's not thinking. There, it, there literally is. Is there not? Even if people's lives are at stake. Yeah. But I digress. Thank you for sharing what you know with me. It does seem to align with most of the deaths happening lately. <laughs> no way. Uh, it does? Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you more about that later. As I said, you can go home for now. Y you're sure? I, I mean, we came all this way, and I feel like I hardly did anything. You did more than enough, Mary. Please leave. I need to focus on the research I've been collecting, and the last thing I need is a headache. Dude, she's such a bitch. She's such a bitch. She's the best. I understand. I'll text my driver. Yes, we get a fancy ride. Oh, nice. I'll text my driver to pick you up out front. Give me your address so I can send it to him, too. Ooh. The game told us to lie about stuff. Hmm. I bet this is the last time that they're going to try to trick you. Oh, um, that won't be necessary. Huh? He can just, uh, drop me off by the cemetery. Why? Just cause. I just, uh, don't feel like going home right now. Alright then. Okay, perfect. I thought they were going to ask me for my address. And then that was going to be like a trick. After saying goodbye, I went out. Oh, out front, to the car that will drive me back to the cemetery. It was a bit quiet and awkward ride, but I arrived there safely, so I can't complain. I had gotten later than I thought, however. I didn't realize how fast that time flew by. I know time has fun when you're being bitched at. <coughs> there wasn't much else for me to do with the day at this point. I wasn't long before I decided to just take the bus back home again. And nothing of note really happened after that, except, well, you know. <clears throat> Hello? Yes, I'm here. What? <laughs> Are you a little late? What were you doing? Is there a problem? No, is this like our time? You mean, uh, other than the ones you've caused me? I apologize. You say that, but... Nothing's changed. I'm doing all I can to keep you happy. What if a ghost is texting us? Wouldn't that be weird? If like a literal ghost was texting us? You already know what would make me happy though. And that is... 
Tell me who you are. Mary, you know I can't answer that for you. Give me something like metaphysical. Give me a poem that I can solve. I'm sorry, Mary, but you know, already know how I feel and what I'll share with you. I'm keeping up communication with you because it's what you wish, but I won't divulge any information about your parents or who I am. So, please, if you ask questions, no, I won't answer anything like this for you. You'll find out in time, so please be patient with me. Do you understand? I guess... I understand. Alright then, things were quiet for a bit after that. I wondered if they were done texting me, but to my surprise, I got a text a few moments later. I expected it to be then, but instead it was, <gasps> who's it gonna be? Please don't be Reginald. No x -nay on the Reginald A. Oh, hi! You awake right now? Twilla? Twila? What did I call her? Twila Twila? What could she want so late? Do, uh, do the laying down on your pillow texting emotionally thing. Yes, I'm awake. Why do you ask? You don't have any plans for tomorrow, do you? Other than standing around the cemetery all day. Twilla, that's something I enjoy. Well, when you put it like that... No, I'm not busy. Oh, good! Then we can do this sooner rather than later. I want you to head somewhere with me tomorrow. Where? You'll find out when we get there. Yes, that is... Typically how it works, I suppose. Can't I know? No. Why not? Because I don't want you ref... Oh, refusing to come with. Oh. You think I'd refuse to help you? I don't know. You seem kind of sensitive, that's all. Trust me, it's not that bad. You don't even have to do a lot. I mean, that seems to be the pattern. Remember when you were a distraction for me earlier today? Yeah. Well, you're just doing that again, but someplace different. Ah. See? See what? You're already chickening out. Don't try to overread the texts. I am not. So you'll help me then? Yeah. In case you forgot, this is for the sake of capturing a murderer, you know. Oh, yes, manipulate me. I didn't forget. I'll come with, just as long as you don't steal anything this time. I shouldn't need to. At least not anything important. I'll see you tomorrow, then. What's your address? Oh, I knew they were gonna do that! I'll come pick you up. She's trying to fish out our address. I fucking knew that she was gonna try to do it. Oh, well... I'll be at the cemetery by then, surely. <sighs> really? I'm planning to go pretty early. Yes, I'll be there, Mary. Smart answer. Absolutely. I'm not really home that often, so... Come across as like a street rat. Besides, I'll be easier for you to drive to, I'm sure. Uh, whatever floats your boat, I guess. Can you meet me at the cemetery at 7.30? Dude, I stay up that late. Oh, that early. The early bird gets the worm, after all. That's funny, because she looks like a bird. That's not a problem for you, is it? Oh, no, it's fine. I'll be there. All right. Good. I guess I better go to bed, then. <laughs> Twilla didn't respond after that message. Seeing how early I would have to get up the next day, I tucked myself into the covers and tried to rush myself to sleep. Girl, that doesn't work. It wasn't easy, especially when I didn't know where Twilla would be taking me. But eventually, I was able to fall asleep. Maybe she's going to take us out for a fancy feast somewhere. She's going to, like, take us to a place that birds like. What's a place that birds like? Like a tree, and we're going to overlook the city. And then we're going to make our move. It was still somewhat dark out when I woke up the next morning. I could hear Croven snoring in his bed as I brushed my hair and got dressed for the day. Honestly, I wasn't even sure when the bus would be coming, as I never really took the bus that early before. The bus definitely runs at 7.30. But I caught one and was, <coughs> excuse me, and was waiting for, by the cemetery gates when Twilla's car pulled up. Once again, she had a chauffeur taking us. I doubt she even knows how to drive. I tried not to question it. I had a rich friend, and they also didn't know how to drive. 
After all, she's probably used to getting around like this. Once I was in the car with her and we were driving, it felt appropriate to ask her where we were going. And she answered. A retirement home? Yes. Twilla, are we going to rob the diamonds off of the old lady's fingers? This is supposed to help us catch the butcher. That's what I'm hoping, anyways. If I may ask, why there? Well, one reason a murderer is being suspected is because of the spike in deaths lately. I know there's rumors people have been spreading about them being violent, but after doing research on all the recent deaths we've had, I've noticed a majority of them were above 65 years old. Ah, okay. So is that why we were supposed to lie as we threw her off the trail and that saves her life or something? People in that age group have been dying the most in this area. She said that Mary's just like, ah, fuck. What? Um, well, I mean, isn't that, uh, a bit expected for older or elderly people to be dying? Exactly. No, Twilla, old people die. Huh? I, I don't I don't think I catch your drift. Mary, if you were a serial killer who, to avoid risking of getting caught, didn't want to be known at all, who would you kill? I, um, I don't know. You'd kill someone who's already expected to die, of course. Twilla, you kill, serial killers kill people. They're, it's always certain groups. It's, it's like people that they hate. For example, sometimes... Men kill, like, for hate crime stuff. Sometimes women kill men because they're rapists or something. Or they kill children or they kill random stuff. They just kill random people. That's so rare. Isn't that rare? I'm going to have to look this up after this. I'm going to get put on a list. Even if an autopsy proves otherwise, most people would still assume they died of old age. Oh, okay. So, like, if you're just a straight-up freak, just wanting to get your kill on. Hmm. Or a heart attack, or some sickness, or some other age-related issue. Maybe a few people would be suspicious, and even spread rumors about you, but majority would think there's nothing unusual about an old person dying. I never thought of it like that. So we're going to be like, look for clues? Evidence? Something like that. Twilla, how can you be so certain about this? What if we don't find anything, or what if we get in trouble? It'll be fine. It's not like this is the most high-security place in the world. I'm sure all the nurses will be too worried about the geezers to pay attention to whatever we'll be doing anyways. Especially with you distracting them. Oh. Right. I suppose I did say I would do that, didn't I? You did. I'm gonna do a little song and a dance. The Cemetery Mary dance. So don't let me down, okay? I'll try not to. Cypress Side Retirement Home. The sun seemed to illuminate the front of the building perfectly as we drove up. Cypress Side. I've heard of this place before. I've seen job ads for it. They were looking for nurses and other stuff. Twilla told the driver to return in about two hours or so before stepping out of the car. I followed her. The air smelled fresh and clean as we headed towards the welcoming front door. So if we get finished really quickly, do we get two hours with Twilla? It must have been all the flowers planted outside. Yes, probably. As we stepped through the entranceway, my senses were bombarded with an extremely sanitized smell. How becoming of the current era. Some things are closer than they appear. Get your eyes examined. Lights felt bright and I noticed that no windows had their curtains drawn. It felt extremely clean and open in here. And there was the faint sound of what I can only describe as old people music playing in the other room. Surprisingly, there was no one at the front counter. I mean, that's not... They're busy, dude. They can't be doing that stuff all the time. They got better stuff to do. Twilla seemed to notice this as well, and kind of bitched out a bit. Oh, never mind. Oh, good. No one to interrogate us about why we're here. We're here to see Granny. This already became ten times easier. In fact, this is a good place to start. Uh, how do you mean? 
What else would I make, Mary? We're gonna look through the computer. Do just take the computer. Oh, Twilla, please don't. Mary, please don't make a bigger deal out of this than it is. I'm not stealing anything. And it's easy. It's for the greater good, all right. Stop making me go over this. All right, but only because it's for a greater good. Good. Now, while I get started, go out there and distract them. Uh, but how? I don't know. It's your job. Ask nurses where things are. Pretend you're entertainment. Even fake a medical emergency. I don't care. Just make sure no one comes over here. And if you spot anyone coming over here, stop them. Uh, okay. Or alert me so I can get out. How, how should I alert you? I don't know. Shout something like, Look, a deer! And point at the nearest window. I'll know what it means when I hear it. Alright, that makes sense. Good. Now get out of here. Oh, get on out there. We don't want to waste any time. We could have talked about this in the car. Right. Okay. As instructed, I walked further in into what appeared to be a common room. There were some elderly people there, as well as around three or four nurses to watch them. That... <laughs> I collected a few odd glances as I entered, but it was important that I not look suspicious. Though, when it comes uh, to me... I just tried to smile and look inviting. <clears throat> but, uh... Being a distraction proved more difficult than I thought it would be. So we just... Talking to people didn't seem like the right way to go about it. I don't even know what I would have said. She's just going through the drawers. I didn't want to say the wrong thing come off as even more suspicious. Though, I'm sure I looked nervous enough as it is. I kept looking over to Twilla. She was always steady at work, it seemed. I wonder what she was even looking for. She clearly knew what she was doing, but... Maybe she thought I wouldn't understand it or something. Or maybe she was scared I wouldn't agree to doing this if I knew. While I tried to appear distracting and kept a lookout, I also tried to look through some drawers or bookshelves when people's eyes weren't on me. It felt dirty and wrong, even if it was for a com- Oh, it was a common area. I just didn't like snooping in at all. But it's not like it mattered, I guess, because I didn't find anything important. But at one point I noticed a nurse heading to the front desk. I was about to shout, Dear plan, but it's a good thing I turned to check before I yelled, because when I looked over there, Tula was gone. That's strange. Where'd she go? Did she just up and head somewhere else without telling me? She wouldn't leave the building, right? Or did she already get caught because I wasn't checking enough? Yeah, shh. Well, either way, there was no use for me being in the common room anymore. Made my way out and went to go look for her. Of course, if she was snooping around, I couldn't just out and call her name. So I tried to be quiet and I looked and made sure to keep a lookout for anything strange as I did. And I did actually come across something strange. There was a trail of something on the floor. Dude, it could just be old people juices. I noticed it as I looked down. It was a stain spread across the floor. It wasn't red, so I don't think it was blood or anything. Hmm. Could be red on a blue floor. Hmm. I bent down really close. It, it even vaguely smelled of fruit, if that made sense. You just found a fluid on the floor of a retirement home and smelled it? It was something familiar, and yet... It seemed unfamiliar, too. I couldn't exactly pin what it was. Taste it. Something about it felt off. Like, this isn't the type of stain you're supposed to find here. All I knew is what it looked like and that it formed a trail. Naturally, I started to follow it. But I didn't get very far. Excuse me, miss. Before, I heard a woman's voice speaking to me harshly. Oh, she's a bitch. Look at her with the crossed arms. I looked to 
to see a nurse in front of me. She did not look happy. Oh, hello there. What are you doing? Huh? What do you mean? Are you looking for something? Well, uh, not particularly. I mean, uh... I noticed you in the common room earlier, and now you're looking around the halls. What is it you're here for? Because it doesn't seem like you came here to visit someone. Oh, no, no, I did. I came here to visit you. I, I did. I just, uh, I was surprised they weren't in the common room, so I went to look for their room. But uh, I couldn't remember their number. Really now? Who is it you came to visit then? Oh, uh, my grandpa. I'm here to visit my grandfather. You can't mistake him, he looks a lot like me. Uh, we've both got red hair and glasses. I mean, I don't have glasses, but he does. And, uh, he's pretty old, and, uh, what's his name? His name- oh, shoot. Oh, shoot, shoot, shoot! What am I supposed to say? If I say the wrong thing, I'm just say the wrong name. I felt absolutely cornered now, but I was that that I noticed. T Twilla! <laughs> Oh, she's got that big, shocked owl look. She was all the way at the end of the hall, right past the nurse in front of me. She seemed to have spotted me as I was looking for her. It looks as if she was crossing into some other room, but I guess she noticed it looked like I was in trouble. Sh should I call her over? Maybe she can help me. She looked through the computer after all. She could give me the nurse the name we're looking for. But... We don't know she got anything from the computer. Or if she was looking for names, that's a guess. We don't know that. Dude, don't call her over. She could be right in the middle of doing something. I decided I couldn't call Twilla over. She might be on to something or trying to remain hidden. I'd mess up everything if I made her presence known. I tried to signal with my eyes to Twilla. I even nodded my head a bit too to show she should leave and that I was okay on my own. She seemed to have got the message and hurried out of here. And now, of course, I was stuck here. What are you doing? Oh, sorry, sorry. I, uh, I've got this twitching issue. It runs in the family, huh? <laughs> oh. Wait. You're Wraithward's kid, Ed Wraithward? Yes, that's my granddaddy. Yeah, he mentioned something about his grandchild coming to visit soon. Though, I'll warn you, his opinion of you isn't very high. Uh oh I'll take you to his room. Follow me. It would never be that easy. Ever. Unless it was, like, literally that type of day, I think. I was able to get off easier than I thought. I followed her to the stranger's room. She dropped me off and then left on her way. Well, I guess I'm stuck here. If she sees me looking through the halls again, no doubt she'd be suspicious. I'd stay here for a while. I'm, make I'm sure Twilla will message me if she needs me or if it's time to go anyways. I pulled out a stool and sat across from the old man in front of me. I guess I ought to introduce myself. <laughs> oh, man. Hello, sir. He Hello, Mr. Red? Uh, uh, who's there? Who's there? Hello, uh, it's uh, very nice to meet you. I uh, hope this isn't too awkward. Huh? Sorry, let me turn my hearing aid up. Wow, this is incredibly accurate. Blind as a bat, and already losing my hearing too. Ha ha ha. Alright now, come again. Who is this? I ain't had a visitor in forever. <laughs> Mary's like, ah, oh, how did I get here? I'm your granddaughter. That's a lie. Hmm. I think it's safe to say we don't know each other. No! Oh. I mean, I'm sorry, I don't really recognize you from anywhere, and I'm sure you don't recognize me, unless you also like cemeteries. Can't say I do, but with eyes like mine, can't say I recognize anyone anymore. Ha ha ha! I'm Mary, I don't think I've heard of you- Oh, you heard me say it earlier, but it's very nice to meet you. Ed, and a pleasure to meet you too. Yeah! I'm sorry, I don't really know what to talk about. Well, for starters, why don't you tell me why you're here? Okay, well, I followed this hot owl girl, and I'm trying to, you know. Sorry, water break. 
trying to get in, get into her nest, you feel me? <clears throat> trying to, uh, seems a little suspicious if a sudden visitor, I don't know. You could say anything to this person. Um, I don't know if I should. Why's that? You're not up to anything bad, are you? Oh, no, not me, my accomplice. In fact, I'm here for a good reason. And with a friend, too. You shouldn't have said that. Well, she's not with me now, but uh, she saw me getting into trouble with the nurse, but I made sure she didn't get in trouble as well. Though, I guess I was kind of able to get myself out of trouble, too, so it's okay. Pa! The nurses are a bunch of hard asses. Oh, my. What? It's true. Acting like they got a baby us all the time. Let me tell you, just because I'm wearing diapers doesn't mean I'm a baby. Haha, <laughs> I see. I like it. I like Ed. Are they really so annoying? Oh, do you know it? Don't get me wrong here. There's a few sweethearts, but wowee, some of these folks need to take a... What's it called? Chill pill? Yeah, one of those. I'm sure they just want to make sure that you're okay. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. I get it. I'm sure it ain't an easy job. But it's a bit hard to be around them acting so strictly all the time. Even when you don't need them to be. How do you mean? Well, it, Ed, they have to go through a lot of people. You know, they gotta make sure you take your meds. Do you have any idea how much medicine old people take? They get deliveries. They get literal deliveries of the pharmaceuticals because so many drugs, dude. Well, they ain't always the nicest company. That's all. Do you not enjoy their company? Well, it isn't awful, but I'd much rather hang around friends and family and people of the like. Well, why can't you? They're dead! Oh. I'm so sorry for your loss. Are you okay? I have you all it. None of my friends seem to have lasted as long as I did. Well, and your family? Well, they ain't dead. Most of them ain't. But they might as well be. Uh, why do you say that? Huh. Hell, they never come to visit me. Only showed up to visit at my old home when my wife died. None of them wanted to take care of me because who would, right? Stuck me in the fastest chance they got. Well, I, I mean, Ed, you're getting dedicated care here. If you don't take your medicine and take your, your eye drops or whatever for... What's that called where you can't see anymore? Something degeneration? Oh, shit. Now it's going to bother me. It's a disease where you're... Uh, whatever. Heh <laughs> sorry. That's a tad rude of me. I shouldn't be talking like that. Some of them actually called to say they'd visit soon. Yeah? So, uh... I'm sorry. That's really sad. Ah, uh, booey! Don't worry about that. I guess it's just expected when you're old. People see you less and less the older you get. Dude, this is sad. Um, It's sad because my grandma just died a couple months ago. She was in a retirement home. I know this is sudden, but you mentioned your wife died. May I ask you some things? About your wife? If that's all right. P please Sure. Sure. When did she die? How'd she die? Go into grotesque detail. Uh, how did she die? Oh, you know, it was so long ago. I don't even remember. Long ago? I see. Did she pass peacefully, at least? I'm sorry, was that too brash? I hope it was peaceful. Oh, maybe he wasn't there. She deserved only the best, the sweetheart she was. I hope. If they're not visiting me, they better be visiting her. Huh? Who? Your wife? Who else? Being in my state, I can't visit her. So those children of mine better be paying their respects. And giving her the company I can't. Um, actually, this may sound very strange, but I think I've met her before. Huh? Ah, uh, well, I live very close to a cemetery, and, uh, I like to make sure that every person has at least a flower. Your last name, it seems familiar to me. I think I've met her before, so I hope I can assure you that 
She hasn't been forgotten. Is that so? You really do that for someone you don't even know? Well, yes. I believe that people always deserve respect, even after passing. And if you feel she's not getting enough, well, I'm more than happy when I'm able to provide. And I can visit you too, you know, when you're dead. When you're in the ground, I will put a flower there. I'm never coming back here, though. Oh, like here. You said your family doesn't visit you enough, right? Well, I'm sure I can make time to come visit you here. And maybe I'll even make you... Oh, take you to visit your wife, too. I'm sorry, I just gotta be weird there, didn't I? I'd like that. You would, really. I'm I'm so glad, then. Before I could say much else, the nurse pot did a check on us. Yo! Hello, hello! How's everything going in here? Everyone doing okay? Oh, yes, thank you. Now piss off. Glad to hear it. Well, I've come to bring you your special lunch, Ed. Lunch time already? I see, thank you. The nurse pulled out those small folding tables and placed a tray of food in front of Ed. Ed sipped a spoonful of soup and coughed. Immediately began to worry that he was choking, but then... Wait. What the fuck? What's happening? Ed? Oh dear, oh my. Don't worry, this will be fine. I just need to call for some help, that's all. Wait, what? I saw the nurse reach over and pull out what looked like a walkie-talkie. She scrambled to get it working as she voiced that there was an emergency. Before I knew it, nurses started to flood the room and I was pushed out by them. Yeah, you should definitely leave. You should leave the building right now. I tried to look over to see what was happening, but it was no use. There were too many of them and I was too short to see past. I felt a tight feeling in my throat as I nervously fiddled my hands together. Okay, he took a bit of soup. He drank some of his soup and then coughed out blood? Hmm. I don't know what happened. I tried to listen in, but with all the nurses talking and panicking at once, it was hard. I think I heard something about an ambulance, but I couldn't be sure. I wasn't sure what to do next, but then... Twilla, there you are. Hey, what's going on in there? The, 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 the man, the guy, huh? Use your words, Mary. The, the guy in there, he started choking. And now a bunch of nurses are in there trying to fix it. I think I heard one of them call for an ambulance. Really, that's a lucky break for us then. Huh? Well, if they're all in there, we can snoop even further without getting caught. Uh, Twilla, he's having an emergency. Yeah, and? What if, what if it's the work of the butcher? Oh. Think about it. Maybe this is because the butcher really did decide to strike here today. Maybe they're still around. And maybe we can catch them or find something they left behind. Mention the drops. Mention the old people fluid from before. Twilla, please. Come on, who much knows how much time will you have? You may let this opportunity go to waste, but I won't. If you're not going to look with me, then just wait outside until I'm done. I'm looking whether you like it or not. I'm going to flail my arms and scream. Twilla, no! I had no choice. I had to follow Twilla. I didn't want her doing something even worse. Dude, she looked at a computer, snooped around, and stole something from a dude. That's not that bad. Luckily, most of the doors she tried to get in were locked anyways. But then she tried getting into the kitchen. Before she could step inside, I reached out and tried to pull her back. She was insistent on going in. <laughs> Twilla, stop it! Let go, Mary. I need to look. I saw something in here earlier, but I couldn't get close enough in to look until now. So get off before you really get on my nerves. You said you wouldn't be like this. Twilla, this is going way too far. It's not like we're real police or detectives or something. We're trespassers. Twee, twee. Twy, twee, twy. We don't know how long everyone will be gone for. If someone comes back and sees us in here, we can get in big trouble. Police, it's not worth it. You're right. Fine then, let's go. She liked her nickname. We gave her a little nickname and she liked it.
though, from the corner of my eye, I could swear I saw her rush in really quick. <laughs> but when I turned around, she was right behind me. So I want to believe she didn't do anything underhanded. Oh my goodness. Actual ringtone. Twilla took out her phone and made sure her chauffeur was on his way. I hadn't even realized it was already gotten near the time when we planned to leave. We stopped out of the building and into the soft sunshine. It felt so strange to have everything seem so peaceful out here as compared to the chaos going on inside. Worry still swelled in my chest, but I assured myself they had everything under control as we sat on the curb and waited for our ride. We didn't say much. I was fine with that. Before I knew it, our ride showed up and we crawled into the back seat. As we drove off, I noticed and heard the ambulance sirens blaring pull into the front of the home. My heart sank once again. During the ride, I looked over to Twilla. She seemed to be texting like crazy on her phone. She seemed frustrated. That was probably my fault, I figured, so I tried to make sure I was still on her good side. Twilla, are you mad at me? I'm sorry. I don't think I'm cut out for this as you'd like me to be. It's fine. I'm not upset. You sure? Yes. I collected a lot of information from there. Share ours. Share our information. I'll have a lot to go over when I analyze my findings later. Oh, I'm glad then. The rest of the ride was mostly quiet until she asked where I wanted to be dropped off. As my go-to, I told to let me off at the cemetery. She called me a weirdo, but dropped me off there anyways. The rest of the day was pretty uneventful after that. But I am really, truly thankful for that. I don't even know what I would have done had something else awful happened. I went home at my usual time and carried on as normal. Where were you today? Huh? You're not already here, are you? Why do you think that I am? Because something bad happened today. Oh? And what was that? I don't know if I should tell you. Then how would I... How would I know what you are talking about? There was an emergency today. I went somewhere today. And while I was there, someone started having a medical emergency. They called an ambulance, and I was told I should leave. <gasps> I see. I'm sorry you had to go through that. But any... Oh, by any means, I hope you may feel better about what happened soon. Try not to think about it too much. And get a good night's sleep. I always try to. Good night, Mary. That's it? That's our whole interaction this time. It had been a few days since I talked to Twilla. Well, I mean, I had been talking to her. But she isn't the easiest to hold a conversation with. Unless she wants to talk about the butcher, then there's really n nothing we have to talk about. And things regarding it have been pretty quiet lately. Well, on my end at least. I don't know what Twill is doing, or if she's found anything. I feel like she really, oh, she doesn't really trust me. But, well, that's fair. We don't really know each other too well. But maybe she'll start to trust me the more we work together. That's how friendship works, right? Anyways, I'm spending today at home, like I've been. Going out is nice, but I need a little break every once in a while, too. Not Croven, though, apparently. He always leaves the house, even if he's not a nice day. He stays out all day, too, so it can get pretty lonely when he's not around. But it's not so bad. I've been able to keep myself pretty entertained. <laughs> just, just chilling with a book. 